Hey friends, it's Liz, your official craft nerd, and today I've got some adorable shabby chic fall ideas for you. So first up, I'm going to use this wooden, I guess this is like a tool, I don't want to say box, but you know what this is. I found this at Goodwill and I really, really fell in love with it. It was only a couple dollars and it looks like it was somebody's like homemade project that didn't quite turn out perfect. You know, it's kind of fallen apart a little bit, but it was super cute. And of course, you guys know me, I am really into things that aren't, you know, perfect. So I just wanted to go ahead and darken this up and I'm just going to take some of that antique wax by Waverly and I'm going to go and do a coat over this whole entire box. Now once I do a side or two then I'm going to take my rag and just wipe it down, just wipe all that excess off of there and it really does give a really nice stain to this and the look that I was going for. Uh, I, you know, you can paint this any kind of color that you would have wanted to, but for the style that I was going for this time around, I really have been loving the darker woods and I love just that natural wood grain just popping out there. Now, once it was completely covered and dry, I wanted to go ahead and take this really super cute stencil that I found on Amazon. Uh, I do have this listed in my Amazon store uh, if you're interested in it. I really love anything that shows like apothecary or, you know, of course, anything vintage. And I was really having this idea with this piece that I wanted to put like little jars and stuff in there, you know, make it actually be for like an apothecary jar, um, you know, like holder or whatever. However, uh, the jars that I had <laughs> ended up being too big for this, so that's not what this ends up being, but you could totally do something like that if you wanted to or if you had small enough jars. So in any case, I am taping down my stencil and I'm just taking some of my plaster uh, paint and I'm just going to dab all across the stencil. Uh, again, a really good tip with this is try not to go too heavy at first. It's easier to just do it lightly and then go back over it. Uh, this definitely helps with avoiding, you know, any kind of seepage or bleeding or anything like that with your stencils. Um, I have just been obsessed with using stencils lately, um, whether there's some that I order from Amazon or they're from Plaid, you know, getting those beautiful screen, uh, silk screen stencils that I've been using a lot lately, or even creating them myself, which is one of the great benefits of having a Cricut. I definitely can create my own stencils when I have the time. However, my life keeps me a little bit busy and I don't always have the time to be as super creative as I'd like to. So it's really nice to be able to find things like this already ready to go. And it just makes for snazzing up, you know, an older piece like this or a rough looking piece like this so much easier. So I dry it a little bit before I take it off, but as you can tell, it just, it looks fantastic. I really, really loved it. So one of the techniques I always do after I stencil, especially on wood, is I go over it with my sanding block. That was all there was to this project. I added some greenery and some florals in it, and I think it just looks absolutely beautiful. So for this next piece, I found this sign from Goodwill. Uh, it was just a couple dollars and I picked it up because I know that I will repurpose these types of signs. Uh, I'm always on the lookout when I go to any kind of thrift store or Goodwill for signs like these that I know that I can uh, flip and, and do something different with them as long as they're affordable. Um, a lot of times though lately I've noticed that Goodwill has been trying to really pull one over us on you know, as far as pricing goes, like they are almost charging as much as say like, um, 
a Ross or TJ Maxx or something like that. Like it is not a good deal at all, not for something used. So I'm very picky about it now. And you know, when I do find one or two, I do try to get them when I can. But in this case, I'm just gonna repurpose this um, coating it with some plaster paint. I do a couple of coats on this because that green, for whatever reason, really just kept wanting to pop through. Now, I could have sanded this down prior to. However, <laughs> sometimes you're really just wanting to get something done or, you know, you're kind of in a hurry to get something done. And, you know, that's, that's just what it was in this case. So maybe take the time to sand it down a little bit and it wouldn't take so much paint, whatever. Uh, I wanted to do this stencil. Now, I used a stencil on my last video, and I really just wanted to try it again. I love these pumpkins. Uh, this stencil, yes, is also available in my Amazon store, too. I think it's really sweet, and I thought I was going to just do, like, this really, you know, pretty celery color over top, and, you know, honestly, it was, it was really cute just with this stencil. But you guys know how sometimes you have an idea and it just doesn't turn out. <laughs> and I am not ashamed or embarrassed to show you guys when I mess up or if I make something I'm just not 100% thrilled with. I mean, it's, it's a part of crafting, you guys. Things happen. So as you can tell, this is actually really cute. I think if I would have just left it like that, it would have been great. But no, I started to, you know, add a little bit of uh, the green around the edges and then I sanded it down and then it started looking a little too green for me. Uh, but then I was also going to put a rub on decal over top of this. Well, <laughs> you can see all my mess ups here as we go along. I got the idea to put some Mod Podge down first so that way it would help with my rub on transfer to stick better well it ended up screwing up along the way and then as you saw earlier i had to like repaint over a piece that got all messed up and yeah it was already beginning to be a mess then this transfer was not working like i just it was frustrating me it was bubbling it wasn't sticking so as you see there i got mad and ripped it off <laughs> so uh, nothing against the transfers. I know it's probably everything to do with how I was putting on that on the sign and that's my fault and that's fine. Whatever. I'm not perfect, you guys. So I decided to go ahead and just repaint this thing because now we're going to do a whole different direction. Again, I do still like how those <laughs> green pumpkins looked. Had I just left it by itself, it probably would have been totally cute and I could have, you know, it would have just been that. But no, that's not what I was going to do. So I had some of these pumpkin, um, I guess these are like the ornaments. Dollar Tree sells them every year. Uh, so I pulled out four because I wanted to do kind of like an ombre pumpkin effect on this sign with these. So I'm filling in the little holes there with my little um, wood filler. And then I sand it down, you know, to make it all nice and even. And so the next step is just to paint them. I'm gonna still use that green color, but now I'm going to try doing like an ombre effect. So I wanted to have one darker, then of course have them getting lighter and lighter. Uh, I still mess this up, y'all. <laughs> like uh, I start off with the four pumpkins and um, as you'll see, it just, it just did not work the way that I wanted it to. So what I kept doing was adding white paint to this to kind of lighten it up, lighten it up uh, as I went along. But then I was realizing, you know, I really didn't have one that was like really dark and I didn't think to mix anything with it to make it darker. And so I just kept adding layers of paint. And then as I was drying it, it was bubbling the paint and giving it texture. And I was like, nope, I'm screwing this up. So I threw that one away. <laughs> But I was like, this fine, because I liked just the three. I thought that would look really cute as well. Um, took some of this antique wax, and I just kind of was streaking up my my board there. And then I'm going to sand it down just to, you know, I didn't want it to be so dominant on the back of the sign. Um, but I always like to add just a little bit of something, something, you know, on the sign so it's not too stark white or anything. But I think once you sand it down, it definitely makes it look a whole lot better. Uh, then taking just some hot glue, I'm going to glue these pumpkins down. Uh, right in the middle of my sign and you know they may not be the perfect ombre I guess colors on there but 
it works for me. I thought it was still super adorable. Uh, definitely still fits my style and of course these pumpkins could have been any color but I really wanted to keep it nice and you know simple I know last week's video I kind of went into the darker side of things and with Halloween coming up I probably will have some more Halloween style things coming up as well but I definitely want to try to keep it with my vintage you know shabby chic type flair so we'll see how that works uh, with this, I'm taking just some, uh, these were coffee stained uh, pieces of linen strips. I, I keep a whole bunch of these lying around and I just decided to make some little bows to put on the top of all of my pumpkins. I really felt that that just gave it the vibe that I was going for for this and it wasn't, it's not too over the top. So you have to tell me if you guys would do something similar to this. Maybe you would use some like ribbon or something lacy. I mean, truthfully, it all depends on your style. You know, you could just use twine on there. I've used twine quite a bit <laughs> in my time. So, but I wanted to kind of go in a little bit different direction. And I really love the look of coffee stained linen and fabrics. Uh, there's just something so old and vintage about it that just, I love it so much. So just a little bit of dab of hot glue, stick them right on. And really that was all there was to this project. I mean, it couldn't have been any simpler. And all it was was just a repurposed sign from Goodwill. So never walk past those guys. There's always things that you could do with those. I really like this. So this next piece is also something I picked up while at the thrift store. It was like 99 cents. I think it's just a little wooden utensil holder. Uh, it already had like a kind of like a grayish stain to it, but that wasn't the color that I was going for. So again, I'm taking just some of that Waverly wax and I am going to just put a coat on there and wipe it down and it darkens it up just enough that it's going to match everything else that I've been working on and the rest of my decor. And I really loved it and this is just something super simple now if you can't find something like this obviously like at a thrift store i know dollar tree had their little i guess pencil boxes or wooden containers that they had for the longest time they had them in round ones they had them in the boxes uh, i do think i have some of them lying around somewhere too uh, but i just like taking something that's a little bit different not always dollar tree stuff uh, and just giving it new life so now i'm taking another one of those pumpkins Again, I filled in the hole. Probably really wasn't necessary because I ended up covering it anyway, but I just, I like the, to make sure that it's completely finished. Now, this wood filler is supposed to be stainable, but as you can tell, <laughs> that wax was not sticking to it. So whatever, that's why it's a little discolored there. No big deal. Um, I decided I wanted to kind of lighten it just a little bit because I'm gonna glue this right on the side of this um, ut uh, utensil holder. So. I took some of that plaster again just kind of hit the edges with it hit the tops of it a little bit and then I'm going to sand it down and it just lightens it up just enough that it'll show that difference when it's on the utensil and it doesn't just kind of all blend together so I really thought that that was adorable and it's very simple like again this is probably one of the quickest easiest projects um, that I've done because you're just basically slapping a pumpkin on the side of this so <laughs> nothing too hard you guys I like easy so again taking some of that coffee stain linen fabric I'm just gonna make another quick bow and I'm gonna glue that right on my stem so it's gonna hide that little area right there now I didn't want it to be completely the same as my other projects so I did pull out um, I have like a little sheet of buttons that I spray painted white forever ago and those I'm going to use to just put a little button in the very center of my bow. Then I just added a little bit of fall, you know, florals or whatever in there. And that's it. I think this is super cute, super easy, and definitely adds to my decor.
So lastly, I am going to take a couple of these treat bags. Now these I found at Dollar Tree a while back. I really love that they had that stripe in them and I want to say it's kind of a darker blue. It's not necessarily black, but they were super cute and I hadn't seen them at Dollar Tree before. So of course I picked some up. Um, I am going to take those awesome silkscreen stencils uh, that I get from Plaid. I believe it's like Folk Art is the brand that does these. Um, of course, again, it's still a plaid product, but I know you can use these on fabric too. So I just stuck them down and did the same technique that I always do with these, just taking a little bit of that paint paste and then just kind of dragging it down, scraping it across my stencil and making sure that it's nice and even. And it is, I'm, I'm telling you guys, I love these stencils so much. I love these stencils so much, um, but it definitely added something to these little treat bags that I mean for a dollar <laughs> you know like this was probably the most affordable little tiny decor piece that you could do that just adds I mean look at that look how perfect that looks I was so excited when these started coming out that way so I had a whole bunch of different little designs that are definitely fitting for you know the shabby chic or the French country chic or whatever you want to call it love 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 this look so I did a different one for each of my bags uh, and then I go and just find some fabric I just had some like I think it was just some weird lace or whatever that I had lying around and I just used that to stuff my bags and just kind of fill them up a little bit so they're not just flat and you guys know me like I use whatever I can find if it was paper towel or toilet paper or whatever I don't care you guys it's like I'm just stuffing it to give it some kind of a uh, shape you know so I'm really not worried <laughs> about what I'm putting in there um, but again it's to each his own you can do whatever you want with that um, but once that's all said and done I'm just gonna pull the little drawstring together and then I'm gonna tie a little piece of my linen fabric around the top and this was probably one of the most simple projects I've done to date and I think they're super super adorable So that is it for this video you guys if you are new here again welcome I hope you stick around and join this nerdy family and hit that subscribe button below and if you're coming back I appreciate you guys so much thank you thank you for coming and spending time with me every week and if y'all would do me a big favor and just hit that like button down below I would definitely appreciate it but until next time you guys stay safe and I love y'all